Nuke 13 is the next step in our journey in supporting artists and providing new tools to help them create amazing work. To do this, we are continuing our focus on helping to keep artists' eyes on the image so that they can do what they do best. With Nuke 13, we have extended the monitor out feature and unified the systems in Nuke and Nuke Studio. This means artists in Nuke can more easily view their work on a second monitor even if they don't have access to a monitor out card. Simply utilize the new floating window and its independent output transform controls so that you can view your image accurately on a second display. For artists working with Nuke Studio, you can now seamlessly switch between the timeline and node graph with no disruptions to your monitor out output. We've also included new controls and preferences to give you greater options of what and how you want to display. Some examples are the new interactive mode, which gives you greater control on how your image buffers are displayed on your second screen. The ability to adjust the gamma and gain of your viewer and toggle if this is displayed on your second monitor. Or color transform controls, so you can have separate color settings to ensure your image displays accurately, no matter what monitor you connect to as well as all the above enhancements, stability, reliability, and usability have all been greatly improved. And we've taken our first step with HDR workflows with a beta feature that allows the ability to display HDR images on XDR and EDR enabled monitors on Mac OS. A feature we're really excited about this year is Hydra support for the 3D viewport in Nuke. This is the first step towards improving the 3D system and by using HD Storm, the 3D viewer can now display a higher fidelity representation of the 3D scene. This means artists can make artistic decisions inside of the 3D system rather than always having to switch back to the scanline render. Hydra supports nearly all of the existing workflows you are familiar with, such as moving geometry, particle systems, or projection setups, but the real power of Nuke's new Hydra viewport comes from working with lights and materials in the 3D system. Nuke is now able to display lights, shadows, materials, and textures much more accurately, and when comparing the Hydra output to Nuke's original 3D viewport, there's a night and day difference. Finally, we have the output in the scanline render. And while the Hydra representation isn't one-to-one, -one, it's a much closer representation than we have ever had before in Nuke. Nuke's Hydra viewer is the first in a series of projects we have planned to update for the 3D system, addressing both the performance and user experience. And while we know there's a lot to be done, we believe that this is a great first step and will allow artists to be more creative and more efficient when working with the 3D system. Part of helping artists to keep in a creative space and able to focus on the image is in reducing pipeline friction to allow for greater collaboration. With that in mind, we are continuing to develop our USD support in Nuke with the ability to ingest camera, lights, and access data directly into Nuke's native nodes from a USD file. This means if you've started using USD elsewhere in your pipeline, you can continue to use it to carry the data you need directly into Nuke. Each node has had UI and scene graph improvements to help with working with USD data while still allowing artists to continue with the workflows they're used to. We've also updated our USD version to 20.08 and kept this in line with our sister products so that supporting USD between each of our products is more seamless. Like the Hydra work, this is only the start in making Nuke a more collaborative space and we are excited to continue development of USD to allow for greater sharing between DCCs using non-destructive workflows. Though for those wanting to get more out of USD in Nuke right now, all the extensions to the USD nodes are being open sourced so that pipelines can further extend and customize these nodes for their unique USD setups. Sync Review was introduced in Nuke 12.2 as a beta feature as we wanted to support artists who suddenly found themselves working remotely and in need of tools that allow for greater collaboration at distance. With Nuke 13, we are happy to release Sync Review with more of the features needed to enable teams to collaborate and continue working together towards a shared vision of the final image. In the initial release of 12.2, users had access to the playback controls, annotations, version system, and some soft effect parameters. Now in Nuke 13, we've expanded the ability to sync all of the actions needed in a review session. This means users can now make changes in the timeline, import new footage, create and modify new soft effects, and have an unlimited number of users see the same thing at the same time. Sync Review, like many of our features, is about listening to our users' needs and trying to help build tools that allow artists to work better. Alongside Sync Review, we're bringing the annotations functionality to Hero Player. 
This means you get the same capabilities as Nuke Studio and Hero and provides greater creative control by giving artists the ability to create annotations as well as update them live during a sync session. Artists working in Hero Player also now have access to the functionalities of importing files and creating new sequences, even when working with Hero projects. This allows all artists to follow and participate in review sessions while using Sync Review. Nuke 13 will introduce a new suite of machine learning tools in Nuke and Nuke X, with the new Copycat node being a standout. The aim is to help accelerate artists' workflows with new technology and give them control over tools that get them to the final image faster. NukeX's Copycat allows an artist to train a neural network to copy their own sequence-specific effect. With Copycat, an artist can create an effect, such as garbage matting, beauty repairs, or even deblurring, on a small number of frames in a sequence, and then train a network to replicate this effect on the rest. Simply input a selection of the original frames, along with what you want them to look like, and hit train. The plugin will then output a train network ready for the inference node to apply your effect to the rest of the footage. The inference node runs the neural networks produced by the copycat node. Once copycat has successfully trained a network, its weights will be saved in a cat file. This file can be loaded in the inference node and applied to the remainder of the sequence, or even a different one altogether thereby allowing you to share your trained data model with other artists working on similar shots and in need of the same effect. If the effect isn't quite working as intended for the artist's work, then they can use their own footage to further train the model using the copycat node and create an even deeper data set. Both copycat and the inference node require a NukeX license, but Nuke users can still benefit from machine learning workflows. Not only can they process the inference node to allow for easier script sharing, but they have access to two new machine learning pre-trained tools. The first is the upscale node, which allows you to increase your footage by a factor of two. This is very similar to Nuke's TVI scale node, but when comparing, you can see you can get a much nicer result, especially when working with fine details. The second pre-trained node is the deblur node, which removes motion blur from the input and can be especially great when working with stabilized footage. This node also has a mask input in case you want to isolate the effect to a specific area. It's important to note that these tools are very GPU intensive and require an NVIDIA GPU to get started. An already much loved tool is now becoming a native feature to Nuke 13 with the introduction of CryptoMap. This implementation includes an updated UI with a new vertical map list to make viewing your selected maps even easier. The ability to select the CryptoMap manifest if it's embedded in the input image or contained in a sidecar file. The introduction of wildcard functionality to allow for sophisticated map selections and Python free support. Having CryptoMap inside Nuke means it no longer has to be downloaded as a third party gizmo, but also means that going forward we can develop this tool further so that artists can get more from the workplace they utilize most. Performance is something that has been at the heart of Nuke development for a number of releases now, and Nuke 13 continues on this theme. On average, when rendering scripts, Nuke 12.1 was 18% faster than 11.3, 12.2 was 15% faster than 12.1, and Nuke 13 is 10% faster than Nuke 12.2, all this with improved thread scaling. We know how important efficiency is for artists, and while we are happy with the performance progress in Nuke, we know there is still so much more to do, and are excited to keep pushing this further with future releases and expanding this into other areas of Nuke. Keeping Nuke as a dependable cornerstone of your VFX pipeline is something we take great pride in, and we know this can only happen if we support the libraries and SDK updates you need. As such, with Nuke 13, we are continuing our support of the VFX reference platform. For the 2020 platform, this includes quite broad and significant upgrades that sees Nuke using the latest versions of technologies like OpenEXR and Python 3. We're also including file format and SDK updates for Avid and ARRI, and have abstracted these into a separate plugin package so that you can access these file formats for the releases you're working on rather than only when you upgrade. These are just a few ways in which we're trying to improve how Nuke fits into your pipeline. Thank you all for your continued passion and feedback over the last year and for being part of the Nuke family. Stay safe and happy comping.